Hello and welcome to Medical Device Review. My name is David Pudwill, and today we're going to be talking about PMA P200022, the Simplify Cervical Artificial Disc. Three key takeaways from today's video are one, general pre-market approval information, two, approval order, summary of safety and effectiveness, and the labeling, and three, the clinical trial and post-approval study information. So here we have the PMA approvals uh, site at, uh, at FDA. We can go down and search the releasable PMA database here. And we can go here and uh, open up this link, which will take us over here where we can search by applicant, uh, device, or product code. Here we're going to search by PMA number. Uh, you could also search by decision date and, and uh, include a range here. There are a number of options here in terms of this, uh, in terms of this particular search. And if you go ahead and pull up that particular PMA number, P200022, you'll find uh, this particular set of information. And we'll see the product code, we'll see a link to the clinical trials information, which we'll, we'll get to later. Uh, we'll also see some details on the approval order, summary of safety and effectiveness, and labeling, as well as uh, links to the post-approval study and any supplements. So if we go ahead and uh, head over and check out the product code information here, uh, we will see that uh, this device is an intervertebral disc uh, prosthesis, uh, and the review panel is orthopedic. The product code is MJO, and we can pull up a TPLC product code report here at this link, and we can see the, uh, the uh, relevant recognized consensus standards uh, here that are applicable. We also see that the product is an implanted device and that it's not life-sustaining or supporting. And if we go over and check out uh, the approval order, here we see this was issued on September 18th, 2020. We see this was directed towards uh, Simplify Medical Incorporated and care of uh, their uh, third-party uh, regulatory consulting uh, group over at MICRA. And uh, we can see the, uh, the PMA number, the trade name, the product code again. When the PMA was originally filed, and then we can see when uh, that filing was amended. And it looks like there were some early, possibly, acceptance or filing review uh, amendments made here, and then probably some more substantive review questions here on the back end. This is uh, unique, I would say, for PMAs in particular, uh, in terms of how quickly this uh, PMA uh, was moved through the process. The responses to any of these FDA uh, questions, some of these amendments could have been uh, unsolicited, uh, possibly, based on uh, the clinical study, but we really don't know from looking at this information. Uh, but the number of uh, amendments and the period of time that these amendments were made in is really something. So this particular submission, the response times to what FDA was asking for were, uh, were very quick. And here we see just a high-level detail, and uh, FDA provides uh, some information about the, the, the PMA in question, some, some high-level description. And this is the part that you're really looking for if, uh, if you're submitting a, a PMA to FDA. You're looking for this language right here. We are pleased to inform you that the PMA is approved. So that's good news. You may begin commercial distribution of, of the device. And here, there's some, some additional information. A lot of this is boilerplate, uh, but there, there are some options here that FDA uh, will have uh, selected. We'll see uh, expiration uh, dating uh, has been established and approved for four years. Uh, continued approval of the PMA is contingent upon the submission of periodic reports. And in addition, FDA is looking for uh, some detail within the annual report. And also, the... Um, information here on uh, an analysis of all available explanted devices for seven years following approval. And uh, in addition, FDA is looking for uh, post-approval study uh, reports. We can see here that FDA is specifically looking for extended follow-up 
The primary study objective is to evaluate the long-term safety and effectiveness of the product, and FDA is expecting 85% follow-up at five years to provide sufficient data to evaluate safety and effectiveness. And here you, you need to submit separate uh, PAS progress reports for each study every six months for the first two years and annually thereafter unless otherwise specified by FDA. And some high-level details about where to submit uh, reports and failure to comply and what uh, uh, that would uh, constitute uh, grounds for, which would be you know, potentially with the, with the withdrawal of approval, and what that would jeopardize here if, uh, if you failed to comply with the approval order. In addition, FDA is uh, notifying the, uh, the applicant that uh, additional information uh, should potentially be included in uh, labeling here for any uh, post-approval study uh, results as that data becomes available. And uh, here's uh, a reminder uh, that uh, as of September 24th, 2014, Class three devices are subject to certain provisions of the UDI rule. And again, a lot of uh, boilerplate uh, language here. And here's some detail on uh, MDRs. And uh, this was uh, issued by Ron Jean. And we see if we uh, head over to the summary of safety and effectiveness. I'm not going to go uh, through this in, in detail, but you see some high, high level general information uh, here about uh, the safety and effectiveness of the product, what uh, this is referring to. Uh, there wasn't a panel recommendation, so if there had been, that would uh, potentially fall here. We can see the indications uh, for use for the product. We can also see some contraindications. It's pretty standard uh, format here, warnings and precautions. Device description, and here we see, uh, here we see a nifty little uh, diagram of it and uh, some, some further description of the device and an exploded schematic. Some more detail here as well about sizing. And here's a bigger table talking about some of that sizing and the coding. Here's some information about the practice of medicine, and marketing history, potential adverse effects of the device on health. And um, they get fairly well into the weeds and, and, and you can go through and see a summary of non-clinical studies, which is quite extensive, and then some MR uh, imaging uh, studies as well, biocompatibility and sterilization, shelf life, and then a summary of primary clinical studies, and the study design and inclusion and exclusion criteria, and, and some of the details here in terms of follow-up schedule and primary endpoints and secondary endpoints and accountability details and subject counting and summary of variables here, and, and on and on, and we, we, we get some details about adverse events. We, we get some detail on the analysis of the, of the study performed. And um, if we scroll down and down and down through all of this, we'll get into some details uh, in terms of financial disclosures, and uh, here there wasn't a panel recommendation, so that's not included here. But then uh, we get into some conclusions that can be drawn from the studies and some safety conclusions here and benefit risk determination uh, details. And then uh, we get into CDRH's uh, decision and the detail that uh, uh, CDRH has issued an approval order on September 18th, as we saw a previous uh, page. And here FDA notes that they received a, a protocol a synopsis on September 10th, 2020. And that based on that, there's this condition of approval, which is that post-approval study. And we can see here that the applicant's manufacturing facilities were inspected and found to be in compliance. And uh, then we see some approval specifications here, directions for use. Uh, we'll uh, check out the labeling briefly here. Uh, we see some details on hazards to health. Again, basically check the indications, contraindications, warnings, precautions, and adverse events in the labeling. And then uh, the post-approval requirements and restrictions, see the approval order. So if we head over here, we can see the, uh, the instructions for use. Again, not going to go into a great amount of detail here, uh, but here's a device description and some uh, details, warnings, precautions, contraindications, and indications here. And uh, we get some details on the study design again. 
and we also get a we, we get a little bit of detail here about the uh, the uh, MR conditional uh, labeling. And we can head over here and check out patient labeling. Again, a, a nice image here. This is a little bit shorter, but it's still about 20 pages. Uh, it has uh, some, some helpful diagrams and information here. It talks about diagnosis and treatment options and gives you an idea of what, that, uh, what the product is going to look like uh, when implanted and, uh, and how that's going to be done. And then uh, we can go over, and if you remember here, on, on this page uh, here, uh, the, on, under our search uh, result for, uh, for this PMA, we, we have a, a clinical trial a link. So we can go over and check that out. If we click that link, it'll pull up this page, and we can see some details here. Okay, we can see uh, uh, the study title, conditions, interventions, and the locations that the study is being performed. There are a number here. We can open this up and, and, and get some more information if we wanted to. And here we see that the study is active, but not recruiting. It was first posted back in 2016, and the last uh, update was 2020. And this is the original uh, study that the PMA approval uh, relied on for the approval of, of, of this PMA, of this product. We can see study details in a tabular review, and we can see there were 150 uh, participants. We can see the actual study start date back in 2015. So it, it, it takes a significant amount of time to uh, collect all of the necessary data to then submit your PMA. We can see it took, it took more than four years to collect all that data before they submitted the PMA. Um, and then the estimated study completion is in uh, 2023. And we see arms and interventions, some other details here just on this uh, clinicaltrials.gov site. And we can also check out that uh, link to the uh, post-approval uh, study. So again, here on this page, if we click over here to show report schedule and study progress, that'll take us over here to post-approval uh, studies. And we can check out the information here on study status. It's pending. Here's the application uh, number and uh, the study name, study design, and then the data source study population, and we can see here the, uh, the report schedule. So that six-month report is expected in uh, March of 2021, early next year. And then we can also head over, um, over here and uh, just see that there was an additional supplement that was received by FDA in October of this year, of 2020, and it had a decision date of 11 uh, 5, 2020, and this was uh, for the post-approval study protocol. And we can see that the PAS, uh, the post-approval study protocol, has been submitted to comply with the conditions of approval. And if we go back over here, um, again, just to just highlight uh, this, uh, this approval order uh, statement uh, here, and it gives you some details about the product, how it can be used, what the indications are for, for use of the product, how that product is, uh, is implanted. And that, that fairly well wraps it up for, uh, for today's uh, video. Well, hopefully you found today's video informative and useful as you try to navigate FDA's pre-market approval or PMA database. And um, hopefully you also learned something about P200022, the Simplify Cervical Artificial Disc. Uh, really, I uh, want you to have three uh, key takeaways from today's video. Uh, first, that you're able to find general pre-market approval or PMA information. Two, that you can successfully navigate the approval order or, and summary of safety and effectiveness or SSED and the labeling. And third, that you can find clinical trial and post-approval study information. Thanks again for joining us and... Uh, Please like, subscribe, and give us comments. We rely on them to improve our content and look forward to catching you in the next video. Thanks. Have an excellent day. Bye.